Hickok 45 here, and I have a Colt lightweight commander. So I'm about to show these targets who the commander is. <laughs> yes, the commander is in command. Hey, I'll tell you what, let's shoot a few more while we're here. Ah, oh, smoke some pot. Yeah, right off the bat. <laughs> oh, cowboy. Yes, lightweight commander, the Colt lightweight. Is it lightweight? I guess so. Let's take a look at it here, and then we'll shoot it some more. Got some more ammo, more magazines, and everything. Yes, because uh, we've had a lot of requests for this, this firearm, and I like shooting a 1911. I remember quite well how the uh, Colt commander, and especially the lightweight commander, people would speak about it with reverence. So uh, pretty cool. We're going to be shooting 45 auto through it because that's what it's chambered for. And uh, American Eagle, we've got a bunch of it. Thanks to Federal. We appreciate their help. Cool, isn't it? Uh, so thanks to Federal and Buds for being here for us and for you all especially for being here for us. But yeah, the lightweight commander, uh, it is one of those firearms that is kind of a classic and I recall since my early days of getting into shooting, and, and these have been around, not this enhanced model, but the lightweight commander has been around since I think the 50s, early 50s. And uh, I don't know if you call it the holy grail, but I know a lot of people, particularly back in the 70s and 80s before all the polymer wonders you know, took over in a lot of ways, uh, just having a lightweight commander was you know, really nice. And you hear people talk, oh, I'd like to have a lightweight commander someday. You know, because a lot of people liked 1911s back then. You didn't have as many choices. And of course, the 1911s always been popular and still is. And so in a lightweight version like this, that's easier to carry. It's a little smaller. So it's a little, it's a little lighter, a fair amount lighter because it's got an alloy frame. And it's also shorter than the full size, you know, 1911 uh, government model. So it's a little more convenient and it's lighter. So it is considered one of the ultimate carry 1911s, all right? Whoever makes it, and of course Colt, I guess, made the first ones. So it's cool, let me get some more ammo. I've got my pouch here. Now when I carry a 1911, this is what I wear in my belt around town. See, it holds one, two, three, four, five magazines. So I'll put that on my belt. Uh, actually, I don't, but I, <laughs> I've had this a long time. It's cool for out prowling around shooting, I have to say. I got some of my Primo magazines, some of the Ed Brown mags, the uh, you know, Brownells mags, and I, I didn't bring out my big stash. I forgot where I stuck them, to tell you the truth, but I got enough magazines here. I might have to reload a couple, but uh, these tend to work. And this firearm has, John and I have been shooting it for a couple of three days here off and on, and we've not had any malfunctions yet, okay? Now, it uh, the round seems to, you get a loud kathunk, you know, when that first round goes in. Like it's bouncing off the, the ramp, but it, it always goes in so far. We've not had a malfunction. So I'm sure it's saving those for the video. Probably have fired about 150 to 200 rounds through it, okay? And uh, been real pleased with it. I, uh, it feels good and it, it's, the sights are right on. It has Novak sights. Some of the things that are different, you've got the Novak sights on this one uh, that you know didn't have on the original since it's got the high beaver tail. So it feels good in the hand. It's got a pretty nice trigger, extended trigger. Got the flat mainspring housing, you know, commander hammer, of course. Huh, wonder why the commander would have the commander hammer. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty nice piece of equipment, I'll have to say. As long as it works, and so far it has. So I'll put a couple of these mags in my pouch here. How about I put about four of them in my pouch? Just so I'll have them here handy. All right, I happen to have some 1911 mag pouches. All right, now you got kind of extended safety on that too, thumb safety. And uh, these, uh, what, G10 grips, they feel really good. Got a little, uh, it's, it's called vertical striations instead of checkering right there. It helps, uh, it helps a bit. And you got deep uh, serrations there. They're really sharp. I love them. I like a, a pronounced, aggressive serration. I really do. Comes in handy. And uh, it's just a pretty nice, the configuration, you know, particularly if you think you might want to carry it. 
All right, so let's take a couple more shots. Let's put a couple on this target. I'm going to hold right in the center, and uh, I think the sights are right on. Okay. Close enough for government work. Yeah. Oh, hit the wood. <laughs> Wow, what a show. <laughs> Still cranking right along. I'm waiting for my first malfunction so you and I can witness it together. Let's do a left-handed shot on something like Mr. Pumpkin. Ah, went through him and hit the skillet. I don't think I could carve one with my left. Oh, that's not bad. Two eyes with my left hand. I do need to practice. It's about time for pumpkin carving. Getting close. We'll be picking a good one out here for that. Let's go over there and uh, wake up Mr. Gong. Yeah, let's wake up a goat. Bouncing all over the place. I think I hit him once. I'm going to move over here where I can see the red plate. All right. All right, red plate on the left. I was just popping that red plate earlier today uh, enough to really convince me the sights are really right on and the gun shoots very very well try a pig an oinker oh close but no cigar yeah it, it does shoot right on Right out of the box, the first uh, five or six shots I took with it, I, was, I just couldn't seem to miss the red plates. And uh, it's just, oh, good. So, and of course, the sights are, I mean, you could move them, but, you know, well, you get to loosen the screw and move them around a little bit, but I wouldn't touch them on this firearm because they seem to be right on, okay? While it's good and dirty, one thing I've not done is tried hollow points, okay? So we got some Hydroshock here from Federal. Let's just try them out. They're, uh, you know, they're about as open as most hollow points uh, you encounter are. Some are actually not quite that open. Uh, while it's dirty, I'll see if it'll cycle them. Let's put those on the pumpkin. <laughs> Woo! Got him off there. Oh, he's trying to get away. <laughs> Got one on him <laughs> on the run. Poor old pumpkin. He never hurt anybody. And look what we did to him. That wasn't very nice, was it? Uh, what else did I not tell you about this? You got your uh, your holy trigger there. Mainly, uh, whether a trigger has holes in it doesn't mean much to me. But uh, I like the long trigger and the flat mainspring housing. Those of you who have been around a while know that. Also, you got this undercut here. That's kind of nice. You get that finger up a little bit higher. Just like your beaver tail helps you get your hand up higher. Actually, it helps you get the bore axis lower. It's what your kind of your goal is. Just get a good grip on it. And you really do lock in with those G10 grips. It, it's just a good feeling pistol locks right in. It does. I'm beginning to think after, you know, I love my, my Ed Brown uh, Cobra Carry, but I'm beginning to develop the, the opinion 
that that bobtail part in the back I don't like it as much as I earlier did and thought I would I really don't uh, but because uh, every time I pick up a, a firearm like it like this is the same configuration of that gun it just locks in and feels better to me <laughs> so oh well but uh I mean it's fine but the, this thing just really locks in it feels good uh anything else about it i won't take it apart it's 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 your standard uh 1911 inside it does not have the the full length guide rod you know so it's just standard kind of the gi guide rod and everything spring which i love just standard stuff except for the recoil spring which is a dual spring just uh two springs one inside the other and it's supposed to reduce the the recoil or felt recoil a little bit and also lasts longer than a regular recoil spring like maybe say up to like 15,000 rounds I don't know if that's how true that is uh, so it lasts a, a good bit longer than a standard recoil spring and even I read somewhere where someone thought it made the gun even more reliable I don't know if that's true either but it does feel good uh, John and I both noticed even with this light frame because it's a lightweight model you don't really get the feeling it's jumping around on you like it ought to okay because it's not that heavy and uh, I you know I don't know I, I'm, I'm liking it as you can tell because if there's things I don't like about it I'll tell you uh, I'm not sure what that is for a 1911 if you like 1911s and you kind of uh, enjoy a commander size I load while I'm yakking here a little bit uh, there's not a lot to hate about it it feels good in the hand with the high beaver tail the long trigger uh, again, you know, flat mainspring housing. You got all the things that uh, a lot of people like on a 1911. Uh, at least I do. And good sights, good clear three dot uh, sight picture. Novax, those are real Novax sights. Okay, and I like Novax sights. So uh, if the pistol works and is reliable, I'm not going to find anything too negative about it. Now, some people would say there's one gigantic negative, and that's the fact that it's a 1911. You know. But, you know me, I like a 1911, uh, just like I like a lot of firearms. I have several, and I enjoy firing them. And if, I said before, today, 2016, I were going to carry a 1911, it would be in this configuration, okay? Uh, lightweight Commander. It is, it is uh, you know, it's been around since the 50s. Now, this one is improved. And I'd rather carry this one than one of the originals, you know, with the beaver tail and all the things I talked about. But the lightweight commander just makes a lot of sense. Unless you're going to go out and pound many, many thousands of rounds through one. Yeah, maybe you want an all steel uh, government model or something. But it is intended to be carried, not necessarily shot 100,000 rounds. It does have an aluminum alloy frame. Okay, so it's not going to hold up quite as well probably a steel although the aluminum alloys uh, these days I think are are better than in the old days uh, so I, I don't know you have to be judge of that and I've had some issues in the past with uh, aluminum ramps so I do like to see a uh, I like the companies and who is it? I think Ruger's doing that maybe Springfield I like to see companies that take that ramp when they have an alloy frame and embed regular steel in it a block of steel and i'm drawing a blank on who it is is it ruger or springfield that actually has a, a piece of titanium in the ramp that's cool that's cool titanium strong stuff and so that way you know you're not going to bang up the ramp or dent the ramp now i don't know i'm, I'm uh, not to criticize the cold frame uh they may have figured out how to to make uh, an alloy that that prevents that from being a problem Okay, I hope they have. Now, I've shot it a fair amount. I even noticed any damage to it. So time only tells on something like that. Uh, so so far it's been a it's been a sweetie. Just keeps cranking. I, I didn't do my research. I read across ran across somebody had trouble with one, but we've not had any trouble you know with this one. Uh, John's kind of hard to please with pistols. He likes it. Uh, You know what? I, I don't like that pig standing there. I'm going to take that other pig down. Or try to. Ah. 
No wonder I was missing. Did you see that flinch? There we go. Come on, get it up there. Bong. Okay. And let's hit the gong so we hear a real bong. Yeah, let's don't say we did. I got a little flinchitis here. It's been a long day. All right. It's amazing how you have to hold the sights right on the target and get a good trigger release or you're not going to hit anything. It's, uh, it's doesn't matter how much you shoot and how comfortable you are with a certain type of uh, pistol, it's uh, laws of physics. It's like gravity, I tell you. You get overconfident, think, oh, I can hit that, no trouble. I was hitting it this morning every time or whatever. Not got to repeat whatever you're doing right, you got to repeat it every time. <laughs> oh, let's play a little bit here close now. Ooh, my ear back in there. There we go. Nice. Pops them around there. Oh, there I go, neglecting that other cowboy. Let's put it in the holster. It's just a, I don't know, Galco or whatever, uh, pancake holster here. Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, we got a couple of Desperados, two Cowboys that really want to take me out. Let's not let them do it. Yeah, get them first. <laughs> and then this coffin here is really trying to uh, attack me. So uh, let's work on him. Put a couple of rounds on him. I'll probably have to shoot one more magazine, right? Uh, there we go. That's a lot of rounds we fired through this thing, and it was brand new. And it just keeps on cranking. Wow. And this goes back to Buds for the E-Gunner. I kind of like to keep this one. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we've told you all about that. Once we shoot them and do the video, it's out of our hands, you know, whatever uh, they uh, make on them is is theirs except for the 10 percent that goes to the second harvest food bank so and we appreciate you all contributing to that effort because it's brought in thousands uh, of dollars you know to the second harvest food bank it's cool so it's a win-win we can uh obtain about any firearm in their inventory and uh just uh you know learn about it and show it to you all so it works out really well we appreciate buds and we appreciate you all watching let's see what needs to be shot that has not been shot? How about the plates? There we go. <laughs> Those plates will humble you, even though, you know, it doesn't look that hard. If you've ever shot little six or eight inch plates, they're so simple to miss. They really are. And uh, I almost didn't shoot at them because I'm not shooting as well as I do some days. But actually, this thing is really shootable. I've, uh, I've been very pleased, pleased with it. I'm impressed. Okay, I'm impressed. And I'm glad we got a hold of one. I'm glad you all have requested it. Uh, it's uh, really got, got the stuff I like on one of these. You know, I, I like those deep serrations. Uh, there's no question getting a hold of that. And, uh, you know, it's just... Great configuration, no doubt about it. Uh, for a 1911, if you're thinking of carrying a 1911, whether it's this gun or a Colt or, or another, and there's several people that make this, even the high-end custom gun makers make guns just like this. And I guess about everybody does now. 
makes a commander size, the lightweight commander type uh, pistol. Uh, and it's, it's good to see Colt making one that that uh, I don't know, seems to work and, and I like it. I really do because you know over the years sometimes Colt's quality can can vary. You know you would expect from Colt to always get top-notch quality and normally you do I think but you know sometimes you don't necessarily at least in the past uh, but I don't know they're kind of getting their act together uh, on their firearms it seems. That's pretty cool gun. I feel very comfortable comfortable putting this in a holster uh, especially now after a couple hundred rounds plus without any trouble and carrying the thing because it just feels good uh, I like the sights and you know coming out with that thing of course it'd be cocked and locked uh, it's, just, it's just a natural good old 1911 some people like to hate them and uh, some people like to love them and I'm somewhere in the middle life is good <laughs> oh, well, since I'm still here, let me take this moment to thank uh, SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute, for their support of the channel. Uh, we appreciate you know, their help. Uh, SDI is a place where you can get certified in uh, gunsmithing. You can even get an associate's degree in firearms technology and work in various areas of the firearms field. It might be appealing to you. They work a lot with veterans and uh, it's just a pretty cool place. So check out the link, uh, sdi.edu. Uh, the link is in uh, the description of most videos, almost all videos for the last six months or more. So, uh, so check that out. Also, while I have you, since I'm still here, uh, be sure to, to check the links in all the descriptions because you know we're on Full 30 now also with all the videos. So there's a link in the, in the descriptions to Full 30, as well as, of course, our sponsors, uh, SDI, BudsGunShop.com, uh, Federal Premium. So, all the good information is there, as well as uh, keep in mind that on Hickok 45 and Sun, we have uh, quite a few videos over there. John's doing the, the gun culture radio show over there. Check it out if you haven't done that yet. Our Facebook page, uh, the Hickok 45 Facebook, uh, Hickok 45 and Sun Facebook page. That's where we try to stay in touch with you and uh, give you a little extra information even post pictures and uh, a little video occasionally, just, just whatever, uh, mainly just a way to keep up with you all and provide some more information. You know, we're not really Facebookers, but it's a, it's a pretty good system for that, even though most of us are not in love with Facebook, right? <laughs> so check all that out. And you really had better check it out because I might just have to come to your house and have a chat with you if you don't. And I expect to have coffee and donuts ready when I get there. Right.